In this video, we'll demonstrate and explain some of the features you can use to live broadcast musical performance and concerts to an audience over YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Twitch, either from a single location or with your band members all playing from each of your homes. We'll also show you how you can partner with Jamkazam to use Eventbrite if you'd like to sell tickets to your concert to generate income from the performance. Let's start with getting a live event set up so that Jamkazam can stream into this event. We'll use YouTube Live as the example for this tutorial, but Facebook Live and Twitch work in very similar ways. In YouTube, look at the top right area of the screen, click on the video camera icon with the plus sign, and then click the Go Live menu command. You'll see a YouTube Studio page displayed. Click the Stream option at the top of the left column of this page. Under the New Stream header, enter a title for the performance or concert. If you are putting on a free public concert, we recommend you choose the public option. If you are putting on a paid concert through Eventbrite, or don't want the general public to find your event on YouTube, we recommend you choose the unlisted option. You may add a description for your event, and then we recommend you choose music for the event type. If you want to just stream a spontaneous performance right now, skip the schedule for later option. But if you want to set up the concert for a specific time in the future, you'll want to turn on the scheduling feature and specify the date and start time for your performance. You can choose whether the performance is suitable for kids or not and then click the Create Stream button. We're going to create the YouTube live stream now to show how this works. If you're scheduling your event for a specific time in the future, you can come back to this YouTube live studio page to create the stream a little bit ahead of the actual event start time to get everything set up and tested in your Jamkazam session. When you are ready to live stream your performance, the only thing you'll need is something called a stream key. The stream key is very simply a unique identifier for your YouTube Live event. Click the copy button next to the stream key and this will copy the key to the clipboard on your computer. We'll show you how and where to paste this key in just a minute. After you have created the YouTube Live stream and copied the stream key for this event, you should open the Jamkazam application and get into your session. We strongly advise you create your Jamkazam session as a private session to ensure that only invited musicians may join and that fans may not listen to your session through Jamkazam's native broadcast feature. When you and your bandmates are all in the Jamkazam session and have double-checked your audio levels to get your audio mix in good shape, you should each click the video button in the session toolbar to make sure your webcams are capturing and streaming video properly. If you have more than one webcam connected to your computer, we recommend using the switch webcam command in the webcam menu to check each of your webcams to ensure they are all working properly. After everyone has checked your audio and video, the next step is to click on the manage menu and then select the live broadcast command at the top of this menu. This will open the live broadcast manager, and this is where things take a turn from your normal pattern for playing together in a session. You'll notice in the Live Broadcast Manager dialog box that there are different roles for the broadcast session. By default, everyone in the session is set as a jammer, which is how musicians play together in normal sessions. For broadcast sessions, there are two new roles, Performer and Broadcaster. Let's review these roles. In a normal Jamkazam session, everyone is set to jammer mode. Let's say there are four musicians in your band. In jammer mode with video turned on, Every musician's computer sends and receives both audio and video to every other computer in the session. So each musician's computer is receiving and processing three audio and three video streams from others and is sending three audio and three video streams out to others. For some musicians, having video turned on with this many musicians can cause audio quality problems in the session. If you want to then add a live broadcast on top of all of this, then one of these four computers must also capture the composite video of all the musicians and stream this video plus the composite audio of the whole band to a broadcast service like YouTube Live. This broadcast function requires a lot of computing and networking resources, so whichever musician's computer and network is trying to do both jobs will struggle even more. It's just too much work for most computers and home networks. Jamkazam's new live broadcasting feature addresses this problem by enabling one extra computer placed on a separate network to act as the session broadcaster, and by changing how the session works for everyone else to optimize for the live broadcast. Let's continue with the example of a band with four musicians. A friend of the band can now join the Jamkazam session with a fifth computer from their own home on their own network. 
This friend does not play in the band. Instead, they act as the session broadcaster. For session audio, this means each musician in the session sends out not three, but four audio streams. One to each of the other three musicians, plus one to the broadcaster. So just a little extra bandwidth there. For session video, the changes are much more dramatic. Each musician in the session now sends just a single video stream to the broadcaster, and each musician does not receive any video streams at all from the other three musicians. This saves a lot of compute power and network resource, enabling each musician to play better in the session. On top of this, the broadcast computer now takes on the task of capturing and streaming the composite video of all the musicians in the session, puts this together with the composite audio mix, and streams this out to the chosen broadcast service like YouTube Live, so none of the individual musicians' computers are overwhelmed. Now that we understand all of this conceptually, let's get back to the Jam Kazam application to see how this works. Each musician who is going to play in the session should click the Performer role. When you click the Performer role, the video window will update so that you no longer see the other musicians. You will only see yourself. This is working as intended because you are only streaming video of yourself to the broadcaster now. The one person who's going to be the session broadcaster clicks the Broadcaster role. This person will see all of the musicians in his or her video window. When the broadcaster clicks on the broadcaster role, the Live Broadcast Manager dialog will also update to display broadcast settings. In these settings, choose the streaming platform you want to use, either YouTube Live, Facebook Live, or Twitch. Note that if you want to use Jamkazam's Eventbrite integration to sell tickets to your concert, you'll need to choose YouTube Live. In the stream key, paste the stream key value that you copied earlier from the streaming platform you were using. For the video source, select Jamkazam Video Session Window. We recommend setting stream quality to medium and setting hardware acceleration to GPU to let your computer take advantage of all of its computing resources. And finally, let's talk about the audio sync delay setting. This one is a bit complicated. Jamkazam makes audio go fast, really fast, to do our best to let musicians play live in sync. We can't make video go as fast as the audio, not yet anyway. So video is behind audio in sessions, typically by about a tenth of a second or so. By default, we set the audio sync delay value to about 100 milliseconds, which is about one tenth of one second, to delay the audio in the broadcast stream to make it sync up with the video. If you find your audio and video are not in sync in your own live broadcast, you can use this control to change the audio delay to improve synchronization. To use this control, simply change the value, click the apply button, and then check your audio video sync on your YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch stream. At this point, you should click the Start Broadcast button. This takes the audio and video from your Jamkazam session and starts sending this to the streaming platform you've chosen. Back to the YouTube Live example in this tutorial, you can go to YouTube now and you should see the video from your session displayed in the video window of your YouTube Live event. Be aware that the video will be significantly delayed in YouTube compared to the live video in Jamkazam by as much as 30 seconds. When you can see the Jamkazam session video in the YouTube Live video window, go ahead and click the Go Live button at the top right of the YouTube page. This starts the YouTube Live event. The next thing to do is to click the Share icon for the live stream that is now active and paste the URL for this live stream into a new tab in the browser. You will now see and hear the live stream. The next step is to check and adjust audio mixer levels for the broadcast. To do this, click the Audio Console button in the Jamkazam Live Broadcast Manager dialog box. This opens an audio mixer. We recommend that you uncheck the boxes for MIDI input, media, metronome, and jam track, just to declutter the display in this dialog. To get the mixer settings optimized, the broadcaster at this point should ask the band to play a song. While listening to the band play, each band member has a single audio stream displayed with the name of the musician in the Peer Music Stream section of the dialog. The broadcaster can increase or decrease the volume of each musician's stream in the mix. If one of the musicians is playing an instrument and singing through a vocal mic on two distinct tracks in the session, the broadcaster cannot set these levels individually, so the broadcaster will need to ask the musician to change his or her levels on these tracks individually if they need to be adjusted to get the mix right. The broadcaster can adjust the level on the audio stream from each musician. 
and the broadcaster can adjust the level on the monitor control to set the audio to a comfortable level in his or her headphones. The broadcaster can also talk to the other musicians in the session through his or her microphone and can adjust the input level on his or her microphone using the audio music input control. Finally, and very importantly, the broadcaster needs to adjust the master volume of the band that is sent out to YouTube Live or another streaming platform. To do this, adjust the live cast control. The broadcaster won't hear this change in his or her headphones. You will need to go over to the YouTube Live Stream tab in your browser and listen there. You should adjust the volume on the live cast control high enough that the audio coming through your browser tab is loud enough, even with the volume control set on your laptop only halfway up to the max or so. At the same time, be careful not to set the volume up too high on the live cast control, or you will get distortion and clipping on the live audio broadcast. Listening to the audio quality and volume in your browser tab will let you understand what your audience is going to hear and experience. One final note here. If your band plays with backing tracks, you can do this by having one of the band members open and play backing tracks in the Jam Kazam session. If you do this, the broadcaster can adjust the volume of the backing track using the media control. When you're done getting your audio mix right, you can either close the audio console dialog or push it down and out of the way at the bottom of your screen. Once you've made it this far, you're pretty much home and ready to go. The last thing you'll want to check out are your video controls. In addition to audio, the person playing the broadcaster role also gets to be the cameraman for the broadcast. Go back to the Live Broadcast Manager and click the Video Console button. In the top section of the Video Console dialog box, titled Solo Featured View, you'll see a list of buttons for each of the musicians in the session. If a musician has more than one webcam attached to his or her computer, these will be listed as Camera 1, Camera 2, and so on. Go ahead and click on each of these buttons to make sure you see the video coming through each. During the broadcast, you can click on any of these buttons to switch the video broadcast to focus on a single musician. In the middle section of the dialog box, titled All Band Views, you'll see four buttons. When you click on any of these buttons, it changes the video broadcast to show the whole band in different layouts. The left featured right stacked button shows a single musician on the left and the rest of the band stacked individually on the right. The Brady Bunch button shows each musician in equally sized boxes. And the side by side button shows all the musicians in boxes next to each other across the screen. If you click the fourth button, Shuffle within current layout. It will leave the full band shown in the current layout, but will shuffle which musicians are in which boxes on the screen. And finally, in the bottom section of the dialog, titled Camera in Band View, if any musician has more than one webcam set up, and if you are in a full band view, you can click on any buttons that are available in this section to change the active webcam for a single musician while leaving the full band layout as it is. These controls act immediately, so the broadcaster has live control of the video features to keep things visually interesting for the audience while the band members play. When the band performance is finished, the broadcaster can click the Stop Broadcast button at the bottom of the video console dialog, and the Jam Kazam session will stop sending audio and video to the streaming platform, like YouTube Live. The last step is to not forget to go back to the YouTube Live Studio page and click the button there to stop the YouTube Live stream as well. We hope everyone out there really enjoys using this new live broadcasting feature. If your band wants to sell tickets to a performance using Jam Kazam, you are only allowed to do this by working directly with Jam Kazam. In this case, you will need to contact us by sending us an email at concerts at jamkazam.com. We will set up the Eventbrite event for you, tie it to your YouTube live event, collect the revenues for the event through the Eventbrite platform, and then distribute your share of the concert revenues. We can pay out your share via either PayPal or Venmo transfers, and we will share with you the final Eventbrite report for ticket sales so you have full transparency on your income. Fans who purchase tickets to your performance on Eventbrite simply enter their order ID into a Jamkazam webpage and are then securely admitted to the concert page. On this page, your audience can chat with each other during your performance if they want to, or can maximize the video window to watch and listen in full screen mode. Thanks for watching this video and we look forward to seeing and hearing you online on Jamkazam.